Welcome back everybody to Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear, tips, inspiration, anything that you need to take your photography over to the next level. My name is RC and due to popular demand, we have the Skylux from Westcott. Now, here's the deal. A couple of episodes back, we had Kelly Mendora from Westcott come over and talk to us about, hey, look, guess what? There's this light that's coming out, it's a Skylux. Well, that was all well and good, but we wanted to spend a little bit of time kind of putting it through its paces and talking a little bit about why it's important to us. And I've had a little bit of time to play with it, and I figured that it was a good idea for us to talk a little bit about the things that I liked and why you should consider something like this. Now, one of the first things right off the bat is that this is an LED light. So that in of itself is huge. It's 94 CRIs, and what you have here is something that's gonna have a low power consumption and is going to be a very, very cool light. So for starters, that's something that's really good. If you're in a small studio or if you're using a house, you know, a room in your house, you don't necessarily wanna have a whole bunch of hot lights. It makes it really, really hard for you to work. And sometimes you kinda of want the dimmability of a fluorescent light, like if you use like a TD5, TD5s were a little hard to control. You'd have to turn one light, turn two lights, turn three lights. You don't have to do that now. So you have one very simple switch. You just go from one side to another and that's it. There's nothing really that much to it. So that's the first thing that I thought that was really nice. It was an LED light. Uh, the mount accepts a ton of different modifiers. Right now we're using this rapid box from Westcott. Why do I like this? When I'm working, I, a lot of the times it's all about speed. It's how fast can you get in, how fast can you get out. I don't like putting together soft boxes. I think it sucks. So for me to have something that works kind of like an umbrella, you just turn around and move the shaft in, it pops out. I think that's really, really nice. I like an octagon. So I think that the octagon is pretty cool. And one of the other things that I like is that it comes with this modifier right, which lets you see, it turns it almost kind of like a beauty dish, right, so this thing actually spins out, All right, and I'll just go ahead and I'll spin, 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 and at one point, it will, come on, buddy, come on. Doing this backwards while you're trying to look at a monitor is something that's impossible, but, right, so now it's completely off. Now look at the inside right there. Inside of there, you see how it's frosted, right? That's another thing that I thought that was really cool. Because you have something that's frosted, that means that you could use this as an LED light without any kind of modifiers whatsoever. So automatically that kind of gives me a multi-purpose look. Now, it's also 5600K, so it's daylight balance, which means that not only can I use this for photography, but I can also use this for video. So completely off, totally fine if I want to use it for video. Add a modifier to it, now I can go ahead and I can shoot with it. It's frosted, so it's gonna give me a little bit of a soft light. It's dimmable, it has low power consumption, and it's cool. That part I thought was already neat. Now, I've tied this with a second light. Now, the second light that I have here is also a Skylux, and right here we have this one. Now, this one's outfitted with a barn door, and I thought that it'd be a good idea for us to talk a little bit about why you would use this, kind of a tip within a tip. Oftentimes, when you're working with any kind of photography, what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate light into a very specific area. So what'll happen is you'll light a subject, the subject looks like it's fine, but then you'll try to light a background element or you'll try to light you know, a part, you know, some hair or a shoulder or something like that. More often than not, when you have just a regular pan, a regular pan what you'll have there is just light kind of shooting in all sorts of directions, kind of like a flashlight. The best addition I think you can make to your lights is this. It's called a barn door, right? They've been around forever. And what they do is they let you modify how you have that light spill, not only going backwards, but also going forwards. I'll explain. I'm gonna turn this on. Now, take a look at my shirt right here, right? You'll see that there's a little bit of light spilling on the shirt. As I move back, no more light. But if I need to add more light, all I'm doing is just flipping this barn door back and forth. More light, less light. More light, less light. So now you have the option to control how much of that light hits a background. And I'm just kind of making sure I'm looking at your monitor to make sure that you guys are actually seeing the difference there. Now, that's how to control background light. But look at this. If I do this, right, and you have your lens Right? Looking at that kind of light that spills back towards you is gonna cause flaring. So you're gonna lose contrast, you're gonna lose color, that's gonna be a pain. By having a barn door set, you can actually flag your light 
a lot better and control how much light is coming back to your lens. So this is something that isn't specific to Skylux. This is a very generic uh, photography thing, something that is a worthwhile investment whenever you're working with these kind of lights. Now we did a shoot. We had this Skylux with the rapid box set up as one main light. Then we had this set up here for a secondary light. Now, before I kind of move into showing you the shoot, I did want to talk to you about a couple of other things that I thought were great about this. When you're using any kind of lights, a lot of the times I tell people, make sure that you don't stress out the connections that you have in the back of your units, right? Any kind of unit that you have, any kind of tugging and towing that happens, you want to make sure you minimize that. So I thought that it was really neat that they added a cable and the power pack sits very separate from this very long cable. Right? So now when you're adding this, you're not necessarily adding a lot of stress to this one unit. So it makes it a lot easier. One of the other things that I think that's really cool is that now you can fly this a lot higher and you don't necessarily have to worry about how much weight is being pulled down to this. What I'll do when I'm setting up something here as a light, it's probably not the safest thing to do in the world, is I'll tie a knot around something and then I'll add the connection to the light. And I'll do this for whatever power cord that I'm doing there. By tying a knot there, what that'll do is that'll make sure that all of this tension stays away from that and I'm making sure that I'm not breaking my light unnecessarily. So that's it. I thought this was a really, really nice thing, but that's something that you can do with pretty much whatever light you wanna work with. That sets up our main light. We have a barn door. If you want more information just on the technical details of it, obviously you can go over to the Westcott site, go to fjwestcott.com, and you can find a bunch of information on that one light. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of what this shoot looked like. So we have this light, right? So it's all set up there. I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna switch over to my Lightroom and I'll just show you kind of what the shoot looked like, right? So there I am. Yes, I'm balding, I know. So in this one section here, there's our main light. These are the studio cameras that we use, so don't worry about that, that's just that. There's our main light, it's being used on the subject. My friend Mia's kind of sitting back there and there's our secondary light. We were playing with this light and we were just kind of adding a little bit of accent light for her hair. So let's go ahead and just turn that down, go over here, I'll show you this, right? So there she is, right? I'm shooting. Now, if it were me, I would have Photoshopped that a long time ago. <laughs> so uh, there's our secondary light, so that's pretty much fine. Now, from another angle, this is what it looks like, right? So there's the rapid box hitting her, looks like we're using it for the face. Now, once I have all of that stuff done, what does that look like after the fact? There's our shot, right? So out of camera, no adjustment in Lightroom, no playing around, pretty easy, simple shot. Now, all I did for this is just brought it in just a little bit tighter. I'm bringing in a little bit tighter, looks pretty good. So I like the fact that it's a lot easier to work with. I like the fact that you can, it's pretty much a what you see, what you can get. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to be able to work. I like the fact that they don't flash. I think sometimes when people are working in kind of portrait stuff, the entire pop, pop, pop is a bit of a pain. I've always used TD5 lights from Westcott's whenever I'm doing any pictures of infants and newborns and babies and things like that because I feel like the flashes are very intimidating. In that, I'm almost always going towards constant lights, but I hated the fact that the lights were either you know on or off and you had to really kind of feather them to be able to play with them. The fact that they're dimmable, I think, is a great addition to that. I like the fact that they're cool. I like the fact that they have a lower power consumption and that in no time at all, I mean, you can't argue with really, really good results from these lights. So for more information on that, you can go to westcott.com and find out more information on the individual lights. Now let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got Brad Moore as well as a website to watch and your contest. Get the world's best photography, lighting, and Photoshop training at Photoshop World. Here's the top 10 reasons you should attend. It's three nonstop days of real world training where you can get personal attention and unlimited access to the world's top instructors in Photoshop and photography. When you attend, you'll have chances to experience hands-on live shoots and workshops, outrageous after hours parties and events, and hundreds of classes for all skill levels, along with dozens of opportunities to network with other attendees. In-depth one-on-one portfolio reviews from industry professionals and see new cutting-edge technology. 
Plus, you can even earn continuing education and graduate level credits from attending. This is the must attend conference for photographers and Photoshop users. Register before August 2nd and save $100. Sign up today. Photoshop World, the world's best Photoshop and photography conference. Welcome back, everybody. Photography Tips and Tricks RC here. Now, before I toss it to Brad Moore for a live grip tip, I wanted to talk a little bit about the camera and the gear that I used to make the shot. So we were using an SLT camera. This is a Sony Alpha 99 camera, and we we're using a 70 to 200 lens. Now, the shutter was set at 100, f-stop is at 3.5, and it was shooting at 400 ISO. Here's a little mini tip. Whenever I'm shooting something, I try to make sure that the shutter speed that I have stays above whatever the zoom that I have on the lens. So in this case, I was doing a headshot. I moved it to about 100 millimeters to get in a little bit tighter, and I wanted to make sure that at any point in time, that shutter stayed at 100 or higher. In this case, 100 worked out okay. So whenever you're doing that, make sure that at least your shutter speed matches or is a little bit higher than the focal length that you're using, and you'll be pretty good in terms of blur. But now we have Brad Moore. So Brad, what do you have for us today? Well, RC, today we're talking about these little adapter spigots. These things, they come in all shapes and sizes for different reasons, different thread sizes and everything. They range in price from maybe three or four dollars all the way up to about nine or ten dollars. And the reason you want kind of a variety of them is because depending on what kind of equipment you're using, you might need different thread sizes and different lengths of these. So like, for instance, I like to put a light on a monopod, but this monopod, it's got a kind of a bigger thread mount than what is on the bottom of my hot shoe flash stand. It actually will unscrew and turn around, but if you have a monopod that doesn't do that, then you can grab one of these guys goes from a big thread to a small thread, put that on, and then screw your flash right onto the light, hand it to your assistant or whoever, you got a portable you know, VAL, voice activated light stand. Or if you wanted to use, it, use a bigger light with it that doesn't have like a screw on the bottom of it, you can, as these are rolling around the table, you can add a, another one to it, screw that guy on. So now you've got some extra length to put this on, screw that on, sorry. And now you've got a studio light on the go. Now, if you're working in the studio or you wanna have a background light, you can get a background stand like this. It just sits right on the floor, really low. Then you've got, sorry, this guy, longer one, drops right down into it. Tighten that up, put that on. Now you've got a background light. What if you want to use this as your main light and then you've got a speed light that you want to use as your background light? That's why you've got the thread mount here. That screws right on. Now you've got background light and a main light. Nice. So these guys are pretty versatile. Like I said, all shapes and sizes. And just for you know a few dollars, you got more use out of all the equipment you've already got. Thanks so much, Brad. That's You're really, welcome. really good. It's one of those things where you don't think about it. Something as simple as just a piece of brass can go a long way. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got a website to watch and your contest. Welcome back everybody, Photography Tips and Tricks RC here. Now, I have a website that I want you to take a look at. I want you to go to photoshopworld.com slash webcasts. This is a webcast, a special show that we're doing to talk to people about what kinds of things to expect at Photoshop World. So if you're on the fence about going, you're thinking about it, there is no better reason for you to join now. You have to take a look at this show. This is something that we also have tips on Photoshop and photography and things like that embedded. So it's not just going to be a giant commercial for it. You're going to get a lot of information, a lot of free stuff, a lot of giveaways, and there's no reason not to. So make sure you go to photoshopworld.com slash webcasts. Now, for the contest, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to kelbytv.com. Once you go there, go to Photography Tips and Tricks. You want to find the most recent episode. In this case, it's episode 34. I want you to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Once you get all the way down to the bottom, I want you to leave your name, I want you to leave your email, a website, and a comment. Now, one of you guys is going to win Natural Newborn Baby Photography, a guide to posing, shooting, and business by Robin Long. So if you're interested about making images with children and babies, this is going to be the book for you to take a look at, thanks to the folks at Peach Bit. 
Now, I don't want to leave without telling you about the PeachBid deal either. If you go to peachbid.com slash promotions, you can go ahead and go to, actually, if you just go to peachbit.com slash KelbyTV, you'll see it. It'll be there. So you're getting 40% off of this ebook, Secrets of Great Portrait Photography, Photographs of the Famous and Infamous. And this is by Brian Smith. He's a phenomenal celebrity photographer. He does great portraiture work, and you can get this book 40% off. I think it's like around $23.99. So go to peachbittv.com slash KelbyTV, enter in the code KelbyTV, and you'll qualify for that discount. So hopefully a lot of that information was good for you. We were very, very happy to present it, and we'll see you guys next week here on Photography Tips and Tricks.